Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today, as you can see, we're outside, and we're going to do a different painting. We're going to do a close-up of an olive tree, and it should be fun. And if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, we're going to start off here by taking our little flat brush and going through some blue and white and a little touch of red, and I'm really sorry if the wind comes through the mic. There, hopefully it doesn't doesn't cause too much of a problem, but I know it can. Also, we're going to have shifting suns because it's over there and uh, there's clouds that are that are getting ready to cover it up and then clouds, you know, they're not that big, so they'll, they'll be moving along. It's a little windy, so we'll just do our best. How's that? <laughs> what else can you do? And I've also got my other camera set up in such a way that I'm really hoping that you guys get a much better perspective on color mixing. Sometimes when I use this easel, it's very difficult to see my color, so hopefully that helps you. Yeah. All right, let's see. That looks really good. I'm just kind of going to paint what I see. It's maybe not going to be, you know, I mean, it's not the most interesting in places, but it's kind of cool. We're going to put just like a big olive tree right in the middle. Should be a lot of fun there, but we got to get a, a quick background in. I do have my foundation medium sitting there on the ground. Hopefully it doesn't get knocked over. And also I've got my paints sitting on top of a wet paper towel. I know a lot of outdoor artists do that. And I think it's very smart. <laughs> All right, now I'm looking at these mountains out here, and I don't know how good your view is, but I'm thinking that our mountains, we're gonna go pretty low here. Yeah, right here, there we go. Oh yeah, my, my background is still wet, so I'm doing it now. And in acrylic, I often do this, this is very normal for me, is to paint a little more red. There's a lot of red in these mountains. It's very normal for me to paint uh, the sky and, and then do my mountains and then go back and do the clouds. Of course, we're planning to do a little more detail in the sky. I see some clouds there already, but yeah, no. <laughs> there, nothing too crazy here. Just kind of soft rolling little mountains. Maybe this one back here. Let that one be a little softer. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, you just build out your colors like this. And then tell you what, maybe over here, let's get even darker. I just like to keep the corners really dark. And I'm seeing a really dark mountain over on my left. I'm, I'm sure you guys can't see it, but that's okay. When you paint, you can kind of, you know, move your head around. Ooh, I like that mountain. You put it in, you know what I mean? That sort of a thing. One of the exciting bits about painting outside. Also, do you see my convenient paper towel holder? It's just most people have uh, outdoor easels that go on to tripods, and most tripods have those little handles. I just swiveled my handle forward, and I got a convenient little, little paper towel holder. I thought that was kind of fun, so I wanted to make sure that if you guys have a, a tripod like that, you give it a try, because it's handy. <laughs> it's my first time trying it, and it works. There, now I'm just adding in some background stuff. I think, actually, tell you what, let me... When you mist your um, canvas and some of it's wet, a little bit of that might be wet, you always want to mist down so that you don't ruin anything, right? Makes sense. Cool. So now I'm just continuing, kind of dropping in some of our colors. This is just look around kind of colors, you know? <laughs> that's a, that's a, an art term. Look around colors. <laughs> there we go. Yes. I'm just dropping all this in really, really quick, because otherwise it just dries up on the, on the canvas. Maybe just a, right here, a sliver of, oh, it's a little on the, on the blue side. Lots of blues, but only in the background, right? <laughs> there. So anyway, you just play around with this. And I am finding this wet paper towel thing to work out pretty well. Yeah, that looks good. All right, there we go. Now, some of this can be dirt, and honestly, some of this can just be done after the tree is in. But for now, let's go ahead and just, the canvas is already covered with a glaze. So there's really no need to take it a whole lot further. I'm just put a little more color down here and call it good. Now, I'm just finishing up, kind of dropping in some of these clouds that I see up here. That's probably good enough. I don't know, we don't need a whole lot. I got my, I do have a cup of water down here at the, on the ground, and, uh, I don't know, I've been dipping into that as well as using my Mr. Bottle. <laughs> Whoa, let me hold that so it doesn't go shaking everywhere for you. Now let's take just a little bit of white and just a little mist on everything, actually. There we go. I have a paper towel in my hand. Very useful to have a paper towel in your hand. Otherwise, sometimes you just can't control the amount of paint in the brush, and that causes real problems. When you're painting outside, it causes even worse problems. Because 
everything is a little bit trickier to fix out here. So you want to get it right if you can. And then what you can also do is, so that you're not um, stressed out about painting outside, what you can also do is, is just bring it inside once you're done and finish it there. I, I probably won't because it's such a simple painting. There's really no need. I'm almost, boy, I gotta hold that. <laughs> I'm almost to a couple of bugs or character. It just adds character. Okay, can I finish? <laughs> I'm almost to the tree. I keep interrupting myself. And, and I think that'll be really nice. I, I like what that'll do. It'll just bring, um, I think push all this back and make it look better. But I see that move. I don't even know if you can tell, but there's a lot of movement in the clouds. Let's see if I can capture some of that up here. I will be a very happy camper if I can do that. Because I like it. Very rare you get skies like that. At least very rare we get skies with a lot of that wavy movement. Yeah. Again, I'm hoping that the wind doesn't cause too many problems for the mic, but hopefully it works out anyway. The light's, of course, coming from the left going to the right because the sun's just over there. Nice. So oh, yeah, I'm liking that. Let me just wipe the brush and do a little bit more of our dry brush blending right here. Now, I mixed up a nice olive green color. And you see I grabbed just a, a quick olive twig here just to compare the greens. And it was actually kind of fun to do that. So anyway, perfect olive green color because I matched it. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm, I'm thinking big. I'm, I'm looking at the one right in front of me, but we could pick any of them. And uh, actually, that one's got a better trunk. I don't know. We'll play around with this. So let me anyway, let me flare out my brush. I'm just standing here thinking. Let's go right up in here. I don't want to mess up my cloud too much, but yeah, I do want a big olive, like the, okay, I'm gonna mess up my cloud. Yeah, and I'm gonna very slowly here, very slow, this is the key. Just tap on little bits at a time to create this, this tree look. I'm gonna go lots of negative spaces in and out areas. Make sure I've got the best of my trees. Yeah, this looks good. All right. And now there's one over here that I like that the, um, that the trunk, which we can actually do really quick, is, is very wide and kind of, you can see a lot of it. Sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time, the branches go down to the, um, kind of down to the ground. You can't even see the tree trunk. And I think I'd rather do, I'd rather do it where we can see the tree trunk like this. There, that looks good. Lots of twists and turns. That's good enough. I want to get that in with a better brush. This one's better for leaves. It's not great for that sort of stuff. There. So I'll just tap this in slowly, working around. Oh, there's a bee. <laughs> and create a lot of beautiful texture. Create a nice form this way. I think we're gonna have just an amazing little olive grove by the time we're done here. I'll put a couple in the background as well. Very simple, tiny little ones. In the middle, I want you to make it nice and solid. Grab a little black and throw in with that, just to darken this color. Same color, but just a lot darker now. There was some black in the original color. That looks good. Oh yeah. And then maybe out here toward the, the tips, I'm just gonna touch into a little bit of my, of my yellow. And what that'll do is just create a little more light. And this is still the underpainting. We're creating depth in the underpainting. Very, very important. And of course, we'll come back with another brush. This is only the first brush, the first brush of many that we're gonna be using on this thing to create a beautiful, beautiful tree. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. I'm just having, having a good time with this. Yes, back to my original tone. Let's keep filling this in. Fairly solid. Now I've grabbed my custom angle filbert brush. This is my number one favorite for painting leaves and stuff like that. So let me actually get a little more water going here. Cool. Actually, and this is wet, so maybe I'm gonna do something weird. Real quick, just light mist. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna let that, not back there. I'm gonna let that sit and kind of beat up. And I think it might give me like a sandy look. It may not work. I just thought it'd be fun to try. I literally just thought of it right, right now. I figured out, well, okay. We've wasted enough time on that. Now up in here, oh, that's, <laughs> that's too vivid. That's. That's way too vivid. We gotta have something that looks a little more olive green. It's a little better. Okay. My vivid sap green plus the black and a little umber seems to make a nice green for this. Oop, there's the wind. I 
sorry if that gets into the mic, but hopefully it's fun to watch anyways. Yes, this makes absolutely, this brush makes the best leaves, it really does. Ooh, there's a couple of bunnies out there. Nice. So I'm going to just come in here and add a, a secondary stroke. That'll help this tree to look a lot closer. And we, we want that. All right, this is looking good. And then when you're painting outdoors, it's very important that you kind of multitask. So what I think we should do as well is, I don't know, I'm thinking just for the sake of doing, you know, a nice composition, I think we should have a couple of tree limbs kind of coming in from the side. Looks like we're standing underneath a tree. And actually, there's a tree right behind you. <laughs> so, anyway, I thought that would just look really nice. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, but this one I'm going to do exclusively with this brush so that it creates that even more refined texture. And that's how you can create depth using your brush strokes. Very important that you do that. Okay, before we get too far on that one, I do want to finish up this one. Good. And then we can also use this brush to work in our extra limbs that we need. We like these limbs, so we want to get a good, a good amount of them in. Lots of twists and turns, overlapping stuff, and then of course, kind of a harsh climate out here. Lots of dead ones. Lots and lots of dead ones. There we go. And then maybe, yeah, lots of dead ones here at the bottom as well. Let's go ahead and just continue working on this tree. And I am now using a lighter mix. Try to get us some highlights. <laughs> there we go. A lot of these branches droop kind of downward. And the leaves, of course, I don't have my leaf with me, but <laughs> my le the leaves on these trees are two-toned. So the underside is very, very light, almost white. Kind of a white green, so just uh, vivid sap green and white would be a, a, an appropriate color. And then the other side is more of a traditional tree green. So you gotta have a lot of, almost like a marbled look to the entire tree, even in the dark side needs to have that. Very interesting. And of course we have clouds today, so not a strong light source. We have clouds in our painting. You know, if we did a sunny painting, I'd say, well, forget that, but we'll just do, you know, a nice bright tree. But no, we've got clouds in the painting. Well, here comes a little more light, but anyway. Yeah, now we're getting a little more sunlight, and I can kind of see how that affects the trees. You get a little more sparkle to them. Maybe we'll add them. There's, there's a bee right there. Maybe we can just add that sparkle while we're in here. Yes, look at that. Isn't that really pretty? Nice. Oh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm going to get this done before the sun goes away, because that is really pretty. Just when I was talking about not doing any light. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop on the highlight to this beautiful old trunk. And I don't think I mentioned this yet. These trees are about 100 years old, so pretty crazy. <laughs> a lot of a lot of character in them, that's for sure. Now I'm going to expose this trunk just a little more than the real deal, because I think it gives it even more of that character that we were talking about. Very important that you do that and add a lot of character when you do paintings like this. This is totally different for us, by the way, of course, but just thought it'd be fun to change it up. We like that around here, don't we? Mm, there we go. Kind of that pocket there, and then maybe you just, yeah, you can always smudge it a little bit. Maybe an old knot there. Wow, that looks good. So I'm just going to slowly so we're really not in a big rush here. Just slowly bring this up a little bit more detailed. Kind of get the lighting level up a little higher and then we should be good, at least with this tree. Well, we might need to add a few details, but we're getting there. Yeah, that looks very nice. Lots of rough patterns in the bark. You can really go as detailed as you like. Throw in a lot of these branches. I'll grab the liner. <laughs> I was gonna don't know where I'm pointing. The liner brush right there. In just a second. Because we're gonna need it for adding extra detail. Now the next thing that we need to do, besides squirting out some more paint in a minute, is 
is pull up some grass. I'm gonna do this with my little number four flat and just a little bit of paint, kind of a dry brush effect. This has obviously been, been bone dry for quite a while now. There, of course our light's coming across like this so you get some really nice light grass tucked right up against that tree and then we can have darker grass over there, but we do need grass. Not a lot of it, but there are tufts of these, this grass kind of in and around. Make it look a little better, I think. Okay, and maybe a little more of that grassy color kind of back in here. The, the background is so impressionistic, it's just not the point. It goes blurry today, just very blurry background. Yes, that looks better already. Cool. <laughs> That's fun. Maybe more white. You really can't overdo the white. We want it nice and bright. Yeah, that'll do. Make these little tufts. You can actually form the land a little more. This is a very little land shape here in the foreground. In the background, lots of rolling hills, but right in the foreground, not so much. So we can kind of give it a little more if we feel like it needs it. Yeah, so that's how you kind of that's how you kind of develop your painting. You can always change it a little. So now as you can see, we're doing something a little weird. <laughs> I'm splattering the canvas with a bunch of little dots before I finish out the foreground. This is going to create those stones and, and dust and stuff on the ground, the, the sand. And normally I like a palette knife for this, but <laughs> I'm using the back of a paint tube today. That's okay. I don't have a palette knife with me. I'm just flicking on this really thin mixture. And see, very subtle. Sometimes bigger blobs come off, and if you get a bigger blob that you don't like, just touch it with the brush. It'll melt right back. We're gonna put grass over this again, foreground grass. So this is the time to do it. Where it really doesn't matter if little things go wrong. You want to get your paint just thin enough that it flicks off the brush without creating too many big blobs. Now we're gonna finish off with tall grass and this pushes all those little guys back and you see after I was done I went through and I dotted the bigger ones with the paper towel to get rid of them well really didn't get rid of them I actually just pushed them into the painting a little better mushed them in you know and that helped I guess it really didn't mush them in we're not painting with oils you know what it did was it just kind of feathered them out removed a lot of the blobbiness and really made it look better and, and I like that so now I'm just building up my little blades of grass we don't have any grass that's super tall here but Hey, so we're painting. We're not exactly copying it perfectly. And I feel like we just need a little grass in the foreground because that would help. There's not a lot of depth in the painting and it's mostly a painting about the tree. So I think this grass helps to just add a little extra to the foreground. Mm, isn't that really pretty? See, it's not super high contrast, so it doesn't really grab your attention too, too much. That looks pretty good. You can do just a couple of these. Over here, maybe a couple over here. That looks pretty good. Nice, and then of course we need, actually let me gray that down a little. There, we need branches on this old olive tree. There, lots and lots and lots of branches. It's just amazing the amount of branches that these trees have. Full of beautiful shapes. <laughs> All sorts of random directions. And then maybe up here we, we talked about kind of doing a dead spot. Very common. Maybe, well, yeah, maybe I was thinking down there. Maybe up here. We'll do that dead spot. All right. Well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.